episode post Halloween and we're back into the land of South Park for a biography on Sam Marsh. Here we go. So Stanley, Stan Marsh is one of South Park's main characters along with Carl Brokowski, Eric Cartman and Kenny McCormick. Background. Stan attends South Park Elementary as part of Mr. Garrison's fourth grade class, formerly third. Stan's father, Randy, is a geologist, and his mother, Sharon, is a secretary at Tom's rhinoplasty. He briefly had a stepfather in clubhouses named Roy. Catchphrases and mannerisms. Since its beginning, the series has had a running gag where, where when Kenny is killed, that doesn't make sense, Stan will announce, Oh my God, you, he, she, they, or we killed Kenny. Kyle will respond, Kyle will then respond, You, that, those, and we're bastards, or vice versa. Stan often used catchphrases during the early seasons. catchphrase during the early season was dude this is pretty fucked up right here which originated in the second the spirit of christmas short though the profanity was bleeped out in recent episodes however this catchphrase has faded dude this is pretty fucked up right here In the later episodes, Stan also has a habit of pinching the bridge of his unseen nose and shutting his eyes tightly when frustrated or exasperated, saying phrases such as, Oh no. A good example of this is in Man Bear Pig, where he does this motion when on the phone with Al Gore. Another example is in with apologies to Jesse Jackson when he does this all the way home from the set of Wheel of Fortune. His mother is also been, is also seen doing the motion in that scene. He also does this the whole time when the reporter is talking to Randy in Gooback. The gesture seems to be a learn a learned habit developed by his constant frustration with his parents. Kyle also has a mannerism like this, often closing his eyes when stressed. This is not uncommon with Stan and Kyle, often throughout the series being criticized as having the same personality. Stan often groans, Aww, when he's upset or in disbelief. Which seems to be an inherited habit. His father does this sometimes as well. This is the same catchphrase Trey Parker used in the 1998 sports comedy film Basketball. If he agrees with someone or is unsure of something, he will often state sure or yeah in a very dull, unimpressed manner. Whenever he gets mad, frustrated or gets dragged into something, he often says, God damn it! Not to be confused with Cartman's catchphrase, Ah, God damn it! Often in school, he would say, ooh, with a slightly higher pitched tone than his normal voice. He will often express shock with, Jesus Christ! This is evident in Super Fun Time and About Last Night. Criminal Record Eco-terrorism and Breaking and Entering Attempts to save baby cows' lives by stealing them from the farmer Carl Jenkins and locks them in car and locks them in Cartman and locks in Cartman's Kyle and Butters in his in his room. 
Originally, it technically is not terrorism, but soon Cartman gives demand for a missile, an arsenal with weapons. And the name for Veal could be changed to Tortured Baby Cows. In the episode 3, Will's Yet, him and his friends break into SeaWorld Park and steal the orca named Jambu. The boys were tricked by two employees into believing the whale wanted to be free and misses his family on the moon. The boys eventually succeed in with, with sending the whale to the moon with the help of the Mexican Aeronautic Space Agency. During the event of Whale Wars, he joins the anti-whaling reality show Whale Wars and sinks many Japanese whaling ships with a flare gun and Molotov cocktails. He, Kenny and Cartman get arrested by the Japanese and put in a prison cell together. In Asperger's, he broke into a random building while drunk and under the manipulation of the secret society of cynics and began randomly firing an Uzi gun which contains several restaurant owners plotting to shut down Cartman's hamburger business. In the pandemic special, Sam breaks into the Build-A-Bear workshop after it is forced to close because he is desperate to build a bear for butters. Illegal downloading. In Christian Rockard, he downloads songs illegally, which get him, Kenny, and Carl arrested. However, he never knew this law existed. And who does in real life? If they do, they ignore it anyway. So, yeah. Because uh, they don't really give a shit. <laughs> okay. Arson slash framing. In preschool, he and the others got Trent Boyette to set a fire in their preschool classroom and frame Trent for the crime. And in Butt Out, however, both of these arsons were accidental and unintentional and therefore do not count on his criminal record. Filing a false police report. In the wacky molestation adventure, he lied to the police about his parents and sister abusing him. Well, it would be a stretch too far to say that Shelley doesn't abuse him in the early episodes, because she does, but not in that way. Hit and run. In two days before the day after tomorrow, Stan and Cartman drove a boat into a beaver dam which resulted in the flooding of Beaverton and the death of hundreds of millions. Despite the population of the town only be being only 8,000, it was also reported that people were looting, raping and resorting to cannibalism, which is a stretch. However, this was also an accident because Stan did not know that this accident would go very far and does not count on his criminal record. Piracy. In whale whores, he sinks a Japanese boat. However, th this does not count because the Whale Wars show was supported by national television. Violation of firearm law slash threatening with a deadly weapon. In Mystery of the Urinal Juice, Stan held Kyle's head at gunpoint and began to threaten him before revealing that he was the one who defecated in the school urinal simply to avoid missing out on recess. He was eventually punished by Mr. Mackey for it. Attempted Murder Stan has attempted to kill Cartman with a laser gun when Cartman almost destroyed the world with his Trapper Keeper in Trapper Keeper. In spontaneous combustion, 
He and Kyle tied Cartman to a cross, knowing full well that he would die in order to give Kyle that a resurrection. Which in the episode they confused with erections, by the way. <laughs> so... <laughs> He has also been known at attempting to murder his own grandpa at his grandpa's request. However, he unintentionally attempts these assisted suicides. Well, unintentionally the first one, because he doesn't know that his grandpa was trying to hang himself, but intentionally the second one. After his grandpa convinces him to do so with crap music. Murder. In Pinkai, he and Cartman killed many zombies by cutting them in half with chainsaws. What neither of them knew at the time, that all they had to do was kill the original zombie, Kenny. Attempted unlicensed surgery. In Cherokee hair tampons, when Cartman refused to donate his kidney to a dying Kyle, Stan tries to take it by force by breaking into his house and removing it with a saw. However, Cartman outsmarts him by using the Kidney Blocker 2000 to prevent this. Unlicensed surgery. In Jared Has AIDS, he, Kyle and Cartman performed unlicensed surgery liposuction on butters with a hose in order to get him thinner in hopes of getting money from weight loss from a weight loss scam. They even framed butters by simply running away and hiding, causing yet another grounding for butters from his parents. Theft. Cartman misled him into stealing a boat, which ends up breaking a beaver dam. But this is mostly Cartman's fault. Yeah, it is. Surprised, are you? Black marketing. In the Two Fairies Taps 2000, Stan came up with the plan for the boys in breaking into any rich kid's house and placing a tooth under their pillow to have their parents place money under their pillow only for them to steal it from them afterwards. Though this idea was already used by a boy named Lugi, who started a business in doing these and ended up joining his business, thought one of the members of the American Dental Association suspected this and was later caught by them, but was not punished or due to Kyle's rather unusual altering reality abilities. Since this black marketing, this act was illegal and branded on his criminal record. Underage drinking, uh, underage smoking. He, along with Cartman, Kenny and Kyle, smoked in order not to be like the anti-smoking group, but out. Underage drinking and alcoholism. He was given alcohol by a group of people who supposedly had Asperger's syndrome. Because they all literally saw the world as shit. They consistently made Stan drink and do missions. And although Stan later said he was through with that group, he still had a bottle of whiskey in his drawer. However, he had few alternatives because he apparently requires alcohol to cure himself 
of his cynicism. That's a bad moral, but anyway. Indecent exposure. In Butterballs, Sam's awareness video about bullying fails and the school ends up being sued by Dr. Marmot Oz. Sam resorts to going to San Diego, stripping his clothes and masturbating, or rather, dancing, in public, though he was never arrested for this act. And this rather amused San, Die San Diego's populace. He performed this act again in I Should Never Have Gone Zip Lining. When he successfully raised awareness about how horrible zip lining was for him. And that's twice in the same season. And only about three episodes apart. I'm not kidding. Look at the episode list for season 16. <laughs> Property damage. In Skank Hunt, Stan and the rest of the fourth grade boys, except for Kenny, destroy all of Cartman's electrical devices into believing he was Skank Hunt 42. Later on, he and the other boys regretted what they did when they figured out that Cartman was not Skank Hunt 42. Driving. Stan has been shown to be quite able to drive in quite a few episodes despite his age and height, such as in Towley, with Kenny operating the gas and brake pedals. Red Sleigh Down. He piloted Santa's backup sleigh after Santa was shot down over a rock. Bloody Mary, when he drove Randy to the Virgin Mary statue. And Night of the Living Homeless, when he drove a modified bus through, through hordes of homeless and then lured them away to California. Grounded Moments Like the other South Park boys, Stan is also rarely grounded. He usually does not understand why he gets grounded after doing something that causes him to be grounded. And unlike the other boys, Stan's grounding limit is usually determined by a random time by his parents. And is usually not set to two to three weeks. Stan has been grounded on the following occasion. Merry Christmas, Charlie Manson. For sneaking out of his house to go to Nebraska with the other boys. South Park bigger, longer and uncut. Stan was grounded for two weeks by Sharon Marsh for going to see the R-rated film Terrence and Philip Asses of Fire, which caused Kenny's death, when tried to imitate the stunt scene in the film. Then that was actually uh, Kenny's fault, but yeah, you know, for imitating it. And Cartman's fault for betting him that he couldn't do it. So yeah, there you go. Proper condom use. Sam was grounded for 10 months for masturbating his dog, Sparky, in front of his family's book club during one of their meetings. His grounding was immediately lifted when Randy and Sharon found out that Stan had no knowledge of sexual education. Well, at ten years old, how could you expect that to happen anyway? They're too young. Well, he was nine at that point, but you know. Fun with deals. For stealing the baby cows, that's carved, by the way. from Farmer Carl Denkins Ranch, but out, for smoking outside school, but it wasn't, but it was not mentioned. Now, as a matter of fact, he wasn't grounded for that. His parents disowned him at the beginning of the episode. Hmm. Goo bags. 
Dan was grounded for calling the people of the future goobats, which was a time to slur in a fast food restaurant. His grounding was lifted after Randy's job was stolen by one of these people from the future. They took your job! <laughs> Titties and Dragons. Dan was grounded for supposedly defecating on a man's garden in a man's garden. However, Kyle and Cartman were the real culprits and frame stands so the kids wanting PlayStation 4 consoles on Black Friday would be leaderless. He later sneaked out, infuriating his mother, who called Randy who was more concerned that Stan was in the mall during the deadly Black Friday rush. Leadership. Stan shows his leadership skills as pirate Captain Marsh of the Sea Shepherd in Whale Horde. He sinks several of the Japanese boats to protect the whales and dolphins in the ocean until their boat was hit by Japanese kamikaze planes. Stan is often selected to be the captain of assorted sporting events such as captain and pitcher of the baseball team in the losing edge and captain slash quarterback in the football as seen in Big Gay Al's Big Gay Boat Ride when the boys are playing police in Little Crime Stoppers, Stan acts in the role of lead detective during the investigation. Although there is no specific leader within his primary group of friends, Stan is often the one to motivate the other boys due to his moral beliefs, as seen in episodes such as Fun with Bill. Super o- superhero alter ego, alter ego, tool shed, by the way. Talent. Music. In earlier episodes such as Summer Sucks and Worldwide Recorder Concert, Stan began to show an aptitude for music. He is also shown to be capable of writing music as seen in Chef Ace. In Something You Can Do With Your Finger, he and the boys started a boy band group named Finger Bang. They made a video for the song Finger Bang and performed it at the South Park Mall. In Die Hippie Die, Stan was seen playing guitar. He was also seen playing a guitar in Smug Alert, where he wrote and performed a song about the importance of hybrid cars. In You Got S in the A, his father taught him how to line dance to the song Achy Breaky Heart. By Billy, Ray Cy- by Billy Ray Cyrus. He and the rest of the South Park Dickities participated successfully in a dance competition with the Orange County crew. In Christian Rock Hard, the boys formed a rock band called Mo- Moop. The group refused to play their music in a protest of illegal music downloading on the internet after they themselves got arrested for it and Cartman just left the group anyway to start directly infringing copyrights. Stan has been shown to be able to play Guitar Hero very well in Guitar Quero. He was able to successfully achieve his goal of scoring a million points with Kyle in cooperative mode. In Night of the Living Homeless, he and the boys sang California Love the Homeless to a large crowd of homeless people in an effort to drive them away from South Park. In Pandemic and Pandemic 2 The Startling, the boys formed a Peruvian flute band with Craig Tucker. They played Mary Had a Little Lamb at an outdoor mall in Colorado. 
when they were arrested by the Department of Homeland Security. In South Park, Bigger, Longer and Uncut and Eat, Pray, Queef, Sam was shown to be a talented vocalist. In elementary school musical, in an effort to become more popular with Bride and like, like Bride and Guillermo, he and the boys performed a musical number similar to those of High School Musical. In Butterballs, his musical talent was shown again, where he was shown to have written and directed a musical video or make bullying kill itself a lip dub video aimed at stop bullying aimed to stop bullying sorry in the city he is shown singing feeling good on a wednesday in the city's bathroom in Band in China, Sam forms a heavy metal band called Crimson Dawn, which consists of him as the lead singer, Kenny as the bassist, Butters as the lead guitarist, and Jimmy as the drummer. Sports Stan is quite athletically proficient and is regularly captain or star player of his school sports teams, except in baseball where Kyle is the best player, basketball where Kyle is the best player in the school and dodgeball where Pitt Pirrit is the best player. He was the quarterback of the school football team in Big Gay Al's Big Gay Boat Ride. In baseball, Stan is seen hitting home runs and is the pitcher. Though this is a rare professional, although this is rare in professional baseball, and apparent captain of South Park's team in the losing edge, He and the other boys also play baseball in Child Abduction is Not Funny. He was also a member of the South Park dodgeball team that won the world championship and was on the Pee Wee hockey team when he was four years old, revealed in Stanley's Cup. Stan also coached the Pee Wee hockey team that episode and showed he quit from hockey after failing to win a hockey game for the team on a breakaway. His favourite sports team regarding the setting of Colorado is the Denver Broncos. He also manages to go from to a near professional in only two days in the episode Aspen. Thanks to the timely use of a, of a montage The episode ends with him successfully skiing the K-13, the most dangerous run in America, in order to beat a much older man who repeatedly insulted him and challenged him to the run. He also tries out for the South Park wrestling team in WTF, but leaves after the coach makes Butters do a gay move on Cartman. In the episode, he goes on to form a wrestling league with the other boys. Weaponry For his age, Stan appears proficient with weaponry. In Red Slay Down, he was able to hold an M16 assault rifle, but did not actually use it. And in Mystery of the Urinal Juice, he was able to hold a hand... He was able to get hold of a handgun. In good times with weapons, Stan wields a pair of Tomfer. In Whale Horse, Stan was able to take a flare gun and fire a flare into the fuel storage of a Japanese whaling ship, resulting in the ship blowing up. He commandeered the Sea Shepherd in the same episode and sunk a fleet of Japanese whaling ships with a rather impressive arsenal for a nine-year-old, including a Molotov cocktails and a large caliber deck gun. His proficiency is probably a result 
of his Uncle Jimbo's influence. He was also able to kill Scuzzlebutt in the episode Volcano. Also in Make Love Not Warcraft, he uses the Sword of a Thousand Truths successfully. However, this is in a video game. He also broke into a building while wielding a firing well wielding and firing an Uzi gun at random areas of the building while intoxicated in Asperger's. Voice acting. In Cartman Land, Sam changes his voice in order to get into Cartman's theme park, Cartman Land, pretending to be a child called Mike Gaynor. Sorry, Mick Gaynor. In A Very Crappy Christmas, he changed his voice to sound like Cartman in order to finish a Christmas short. The two of them are also voiced by the same person, Trey Parker. And a bit of trivia for you. The Spirit of Christmas is the short they're actually making in the episode. And that was a pilot Christmas short in 1995. Yeah. There you go. Way to reference one of your early shorts there, guys. Appearance. Stan is mostly shown wearing a brown jacket with a red collar, a blue hat with a red puffball and rim, and blue jeans. Under his jacket, he either wears a red and blue baseball shirt or, or a white t-shirt slash v-neck. He also wears a blue Terrence and Phillips shirt to bed and a green suit for special occasions. In some episodes, it is clear that he has black hair, like his father Randy, when his hat is partially or completely removed. This was also first seen in A Very Crappy Christmas. All of the boys' hats are removed and their hair is seen for an extended period during a shower room scene in Little Crime Stoppers, although Kenny's head is only seen from behind. Stan also apparently has blue eyes as noted by Kyle when Butters draws their cartoon forms in a very crappy Christmas. But this is uncertain because Kyle said it was similar because he had a sharper nose. So it could have been a mistake. In Good Times with Weapons he was portrayed with brown eyes. So odds are, it was Butter's error when his eyes were blue. Yeah, when his eyes were blue. Even at a young age, Stan has always worn his red and blue hat, as shown in preschool, and sleeps with it on. In the list, he ranked third in the initial corrupt list of which boy was cutest. However, he was not mentioned among those who had to change places due to the corruption. So it was possible that he remained the third cutest boy behind Clyde, who was actually in the bottom five somewhere and token. In the original Christmas short, he had a different appearance. His hat was the same, but it was fully red. He also had a dot as a nose, and his jacket was blue. Personality. Stan is generally the most tender and sensitive of the four boys. Exa for example, in Kenny Dies, he finds it difficult to see Kenny in his ill state, and in Ravens he becomes depressed after losing his girlfriend to Token. Also, in Fun With Deal, Stan is the only one who stopped eating meat completely when the boys found that Bill was actually tortured baby cow meat. 
However, in some episodes, he does not seem to care when people die, as in Dances with Smurfs and Chef Goes Nanas. Stan is often very moral. This is evident in Charity Hair Tampons, when he, Kenny, Timmy and Butters challenge the character Misinformation and her shop of alternative medicine. In Super Best Friends, when he helped battle David Blaine's suicidal cult, and in The Biggest Douche in the Universe, where he accuses the psychic medium John Edward of being a fake, which he is, by the way. All psychics are. So... and is battled with John Edward in a psychic showdown. He also showed some heroism in Charity Hair Tampons by stating he would gladly donate a kidney to Kyle, even if it hurt a whole lot. In Whale Halls, he was also the only one in South Park to stand up to help whales and dolphins that were being slaughtered by the Japanese. He was angry that the cast of Whale Wars was not doing enough to help whales and dolphins, and took matters into his own hands. It also shows Stan is a whale and dolphin lover, and he tells the Japanese that it was a cow and a chicken that nuked Hiroshima, not a whale and a dolphin, in order to save them all from being wiped out by the Japanese. He is usually the one who is unaffected by the many scams, cults and mass influences that South Park has been subjected to and has a knack for seeing through falsely glorified practices and celebrities. In Trapped in the Closet and Aspergers, he is the only one of the boys shown to believe in scams, cults, and that an alien makes everyone see things normal. Conversely, sometimes Kyle takes on this role, and it is Stan who is the gullible one, such as in Chimpokemon, or the metrosexual trend in the episode South Park is Gay. However, Stan has been shown to have an overwhelming and corporate corruption than anyone else in South Park, and has an especially good grasp of the dangers of cults. It is notable that he has a tendency to ridicule and make enemies out of and or bring shame to a very large number of celebrities that are shown in a poor light within the show. This may be because his father Stan's major adult influence has shown to be rather incompetent and immature, so Stan is suspicious and distrustful of adults. Stan and Carl's personalities tend to be similar, especially in the earlier seasons, but are not quite interchangeable, and they have developed more distinct and complex personalities during the show's run. Still, they are considered the closest friends out of the four, though Cartman and Kenny do not have a close bond of their own. Stan's depression is a recurring theme throughout the show. He became terribly depressed when Wendy broke up with him in Raisins, briefly joining the Goth Kids. Stan also became incredibly depressed and adopted a cynical world view in You're Getting Old and Asperger's, where everything to him literally sounded and looked like shit, and in Asperger's he uses alcohol to make the world seem happier. Stan may suffer from asthma, as an inhaler was shown among the things Cartman claims in Sexual Harassment Panda. although this was never mentioned in the series again. 
Stan has an avid Stan is an avid animal lover. He gets a pet he gets a dog in Big AL's Big A boat ride. He resists the influence of his uncle Jimbo to hunt in Volcano. He mentions this in death. Became a Peter member in Douche and Turd, although he had the choice of joining them or being killed. Tried to save baby cows in fun with deals and attempted to return a goat to its rightful owners in Osama Bin Laden has farty pants. Although well-intentioned, these interventions often lead him and his friends into serious trouble. Stan, as well as the rest of the boys in the fourth grade, also went to Mexico and managed to get a Mexican space program, the Mexican space program, to take an orca to the moon in a bid to save it, with all the kids in South Park having been led to believe he was a killer whale from the moon in Sweet Wilziak. In two days before the day after tomorrow, after he and Cartman crash a boat into a beaver dam and swim to shore, seeing the boat blow up, Stan says, I hope we don't hurt any beavers, in fun with Bill, he briefly turned into he briefly turned to vegetarianism, but he quickly gave it up when he was plagued by a disease that literally turned him into a pussy, sprouting actual vaginas on his body, a disease called vaginitis, which actually is a real condition by the way, but it doesn't do that to you. And So just don't believe what the show tells you about that. He also sets out to save the whales and dolphins from the Japanese in whale whores. It is revealed in Rainforest Main Forest that he is afraid of snakes. Stan is shown to sympathise with others, most evidently seen in the episode Man Bear Pig, in which he partially defends Al Gore because he feels sorry for him due to him not having any friends. However, when this pity backfires and lands him in a cave where Al Gore almost unintentionally drowns him, Kyle Cartman and Kenny, he lashes out and brings Al Gore into a cold, hard reality, shouting, Stay away from us, asshole! I only felt sorry for you because you didn't have any friends, but now I know why you don't have any friends. You just use Man Bear Pig as a way of getting attention for yourself, because you're a loser. This does not affect Al Gore, however, as he dons a cape and says he will go and make a movie starring himself. An inconvenient truth. Ironically... Al Gore is also responsible for the deaths of Stan and everyone else in Imagination Land, Episode 3, even though they were revived by Butters. When angered, Stan is often quite reluctant to continue or do anything that will further contribute to the obscurity or direness of the situation. This is shown in Woodland Critter Christmas, after he finds out the critters, whom he helped, were giving birth to the Antichrist. He decided not to attempt to set things right, although did eventually after much nagging from the episode narrator. Also in this episode, we found out that Stan was a Christian. Technically, though this was not him, just a fictional version of him created by Eric Cartman for his Christmas story, he was, for the first seven seasons of the show, Stan's sporadic girlfriend was Wendy Testerberger. In the early days of the series, a running gag would be that Stan would throw up out of nervousness whenever Wendy spoke to him. As the show progressed, however, the Stan-Wendy storyline diminished greatly. In the penultimate episode of the seventh season, Raisins, Wendy had Bebe tell Stan that she breaks up, a token causing 
stand to go into extreme depression and join the goth kids. He recovered thanks to Butters who was dealing with his own heartbreak and had decided that he would rather be a crying little pussy than a faggy goth kid. Stan eventually got over the breakup by telling Wendy, you're a bitch, and giving Token the middle finger while saying, Token, right here, buddy. Wendy has played a much smaller part in the series since this episode. It became apparent that Stan had some lingering feelings for Wendy in the episode Follow That Egg when he grew insanely jealous of Kyle working with her. He, however, decided to show her up by responding to her compliments with, As if I give a crap about what you think, Wendy. At the end of the lift, however, Stan and Wendy reconciled. They inadvertently have an adventure together, and at the end, Wendy admits, having a good time with Stan and believes he, he has changed since they were last together. They lean in to kiss, but in a near exact copy of the scene from the end of Cartman Gets an Anal Probe, Stan pukes on Wendy. Their status as boyfriend and girlfriend is affirmed in Super Fun Time. In the season 13 episode Butter's Bottom Dick, Butters tries to get Wendy to work for him in his kissing company, referring to him as a bitch. And Stan says, Butters, dude, you can't call my girlfriend a bitch. And threatens to hurt him if he continues. Stan is shown to be a bully at times when he and Cartman mention that they sat on a kid and farted on him. He and Cartman also beat up a random third grader when they enter fourth grade. He also threatens Butters for attempting to steal the video from him in the return of the Fellowship of the Ring to the Two Towers while trying to get the video while trying to get to the video store. Stan is frequently embarrassed or infuriated at the stupidity of his parents and the other adults of the town, and he often goes against what his parents do. This is prominently shown in My Future Self and Me, when he finds out that the actor portraying his future self and goes so far as to trick Randy to cut the head to cut the hand off the actor to try and get him to admit he lied. In child abduction is not funny. The escalating paranoia over child abductions leads to the parents to send all the town's children away in fear that they, the parents, will abduct their own kids. As the children wander off on their own, Stan remarks to Kyle, Dude, sometimes I think our parents are really stupid as they all rejoin their families at the conclusion of the episode. Jesus Christ, dude, they've done some stupid crap before, but Jesus Christ, in two days before the day after tomorrow, he admits to breaking the beaver dam, and the adults assume that this was instead a message urging them not to waste energy on pointing the finger of blame. After several failed attempts to explain that it actually was him who broke the dam, through everyone saying, I broke the dam, he shouted, I broke the fucking dam! and explained the exact sequence of events without any effect on the adults. The rather displaced cynicism that he exhibits when dealing with the adults, as well as his inability to be impressed by celebrities or fads, may also come from the fact that, due to his parents, 
he has probably never respected or trusted adults. Although in creme fraiche, he says, You guys, my dad is retarded, but he is not that retarded. When Cartman presents his idea to Stan on how to trick Randy into not wanting to cook, Entrapped in the closet, Stan was thought to be the leader of Scientology, having scored the highest Satan levels since L. Ron Hubbard, and was quickly approached by Tom Cruise, whom Stan called an average actor. After hearing this, Tom Cruise shouted, I'm a failure in the eyes of the prophet, and locked himself in Stan's closet. After unsuccessfully attempting to get him out, Stan shouts down the stairs to Randy, Dad, Tom Cruise won't come out of the closet, which is a reference to the rumours that Tom Cruise was gay, with coming out of the closet, meaning when a gay man admits, to, uh, admits he is gay. That is actually what it means. I could have explained that without reading the article. So yeah, there you go. Stan is later told that Scientology is fake and that if he writes anything almost everyone would believe it and he could make up to three million dollars. Later on when he reads his new writings to his loving public his morality objected to it and he told everyone that Scientology was fake and that it was the wrong, a wrong way to answer the many questions. Stan is then sued by almost everyone, including Cruz and the head of the church, without anyone taking any action until he lost his temper, shouting, Well, go on then, sue me! Don't do that, by the way, guys. In Douche and Turd, he is the only kid in the school who finds the option of voting between a giant douche and a turd sandwich Ridiculous. Yeah, because it is. He is beleaguered by Kyle, the school officials, and his parents, eventually bringing Puff Daddy to South Park to tell him about the Vote or Die campaign, and then chase Stan out around town with a gun and literally told him to vote or die. He is later banished from town for not voting and is rescued by Peter members, the leader of which tells him that in actuality all elections are between a douche and a turd, which convinces him to go back to town to vote. Yeah, they are. And to be fair, it's normally the douche that wins. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> so In the Passion of the Jew, he is disgusted with the Passion of the Christ, calling it a snuff film and going along with Kenny to Mel Gibson's house to get their money back. Mel Gibson turns out to be insane and rapidly masochistic and attacks the two of them with a gun in a manner reminiscent of Daffy Duck after Stan calls him Daffy Stan and Kenny then steal the money from Gibson's wallet and flee back to South Park pursued by him later when Gibson asserts that Stan cannot say his film sucks because it is saying that Christianity sucks Stan counters by saying that Christianity is fine, but focusing on how people died ends up with really bad results, convincing the town that Mel Gibson was wrong all along. He was wrong all along. Okay, I couldn't resist doing that. In Are You There, God, It's Me, Jesus, Stan is led to believe 
that he is the only boy of the four that have not yet had his period. Boys can't have periods because you need ovaries and wounds to have them. And is left out by the other three due to him not being mature enough. Oh, and they were being mature, were they? Right, okay. <laughs> I don't think so. He later uses the only question available every two millennia to ask God, who had come down to earth briefly, why he had not given him his period. After a long pause, God states the oblivious, the, the obvious, that he is a boy and should not get periods. The episode ends with everyone trying to kill Stan for using the only question for something so dumb. Uh, yeah, because he should have known that anyway. It was actually a stomach virus in that episode that was causing the boy's colon to bleed. In Fantastic Easter Special, he was made a member of the rabbit-worshipping cult-like group called the Hair Club for Men, which his father, grandfather and entire male side of his family has been members in for generations. After his 10th birthday in You're Getting Old, Stan became extremely cynical, viewing almost everything as shit, and even seeing people poop out of their mouths. His cynicism becomes so serious, his friendship with the other characters is destroyed. His parents also separate, causing Stan to move out of his childhood home, though it was shown in the next episode. In Asperger's, the follow-up to You're Getting Old, Stan is shown to still be depressed. Everything is still viewed as shit to him. He rides a bus alone and appears uninterested in anything, in everything around him. Later outbursting in class, Mr. Mackey tries to talk Stan out of his depression, to which Stan breaks down crying, wanting everything to go back to what it was. Mr. Mackey incorrectly assumes Stan that Stan has developed Asperger's syndrome from his flu shot last year. Sharon brings Stan to a clinic to get help, which is a front for a group who sees the world as Stan does. The temporary cure for Stan's cynicism is alcohol. Which Stan takes to the old world. Finally happy again, Stan observes the old world, watches a movie, then sees Kyle to attempt to re-establish and save their friendship. Kyle coldly told Stan, tells Stan that they need to move on, angering a drunken Stan, who gives Kyle the finger, saying, Fuck you, Kyle! You're a piece of shit! As Kyle dejectedly walks away, Stan says, Kyle, I love you! only to tell Kyle off again. Stan is later captured by a group of restaurant owners trying to shut Cartmanberger down at Sniper Point. The group forces Stan to ask Kyle what the secret ingredient is. After an ensuing shootout, Stan refuses any more of the alcohol, saying he would be happy with everything going forward. Stan was optimistic of a new life, new adventures until Randy drives up, telling him everything worked out with his mum. Stan is seen stunned as Sharon and Randy move back in, and he shares a picnic with Wendy. The closing moments of the episode show everything has returned to normal. Kyle, Kenny and Cartman come to his room saying they're going off to see Zookeeper 2 Zookeepia, Stan chases after them to watch it, but not before taking a sip of whiskey he hid in his room. Okay, family. Randy Mark. Randy is Stan's father. 
They generally have a good relationship, although Stan often gets annoyed by Randy's obsessiveness. This is especially true with the video camera. Pushiness and melodramatic antics. Randy also tends to be very naive, which exasperates Stan all the more. Like the rest of the family, the relationship was getting bad due to Randy videotaping everything the family did in pandemic. But Stan may have been indifferent due to the Peruvian flute band. Stan also dislikes his father's stubbornness, alcoholism and general stupidity. Outside of Randy's antics, Stan seems to enjoy being around his father. Randy taught Stan how to dance in You Got F in the A. And Randy went to extra measures to help Stan win the Pinewood Derby. Although the extra lengths of cheating may have simply been to defeat a rival family. Yeah, this is going to be a long one, guys. Randy seems to live his life through Stan to the to an extent. Yeah, to an extent, not an extent. But also to prevent Stan from his failures. In something you can do with your finger, Randy was enraged that Stan attempted to form a boy band because he first hand had a taste of fame and failure from it. In Stanley's Cup, Randy woke up from a nightmare of Stan missing and winning shot missing the winning shot in his peewee hockey team and was emotionally unstable at the end when Stan's team lost to the Red Wings. Randy does seem to want to have a stronger relationship with Stan in Make Love Not Warcraft. He logs on to Stan's team speak during the battle with the nerd and asks to play with Stan and his friends, despite him being weaker than all the fourth graders' characters. In Guitar Quiro, Randy sees the boys playing Guitar Hero and thinking they like playing guitar, wants to teach them how to play the real instrument. In You're Getting Old, Randy tries to bridge another gap by listening to Queen Wave. While, he's, while this serves as a chance for him to live his failed dreams, he tries to share his passion for the music that Stan and his friends hear, but he cannot. At the end of the episode, Randy and Sharon separate. Randy talks to a gloomy-looking Stan, and he drives off with their house in his side mirror. Later, in Asperger's, towards the end of the episode, when Stan was finally ready to accept change, Randy and Sharon reconciled, with everything going back to the way they used to be, with the only exception of Stan still drinking alcohol, which was not referenced again. Sharon Marsh. She is Stan's mother. His relationship with her is often more stable than that with Randy. However, she has told him that she considers his happiness and Shelley's happiness secondary to her own. Yet, this was likely a joke on parents breaking up, because Sharon has never demonstrated this behaviour aside from in clubhouses. She did freak out when Stan was missing in pandemic. He had been arrested by the military, taking the arguments with Randy about the video camera to the next level. Stan's jacket is almost the same as Sharon's shirt. Stan is very similar to Sharon in the way he is level-headed and it is likely that they have a good loving relationship with each other. Shelley Marsh. She is Stan. She is his violent and abusive teenage sister. She frequently insults him by calling him and his friends turds and physically harms him. However, she refuses to let anyone else harm him, as seen in preschool. 
when Sam asked her for advice on what to do about the bully Tremboyette. After asking for her help, she seemed to genuinely listen to his problems. Also, Sam even stated at one point that she used to be somewhat nicer to him before she got her headgear installed. She sometimes is nice to Sam, but would later prefer to run him over with a lawnmower. However, she is not she has not been violent to Sam since overlogging. Marvin Marsh He is Sam's paternal grandfather. He is 102, confined to a wheelchair and a tad senile. He continually addresses Sam as Billy and then occasionally asks Stan to kill him. It turns out that he has a family trait involving the men of the Marsh family dating back at least a couple of generations. He is said to have had the same relationship with his own grandfather. He also suffers from Alzheimer's, which is why he calls Sam Billy, just so you know. Grandma Marsh. Sam has very little contact with his grandmother due to the fact that she is hospitalised with a debilitating illness. and also separated from Grandpa Marsh. However, she is in an avid Facebook she is an avid Facebook user and often has her son Randy Bully Stan into checking his Facebook in regards to messages and posts she sends him. Jimbo Kern he is Stan's maternal uncle. Flo Kimball she is Stan's great aunt on his mother's side of the family. She was first seen and killed in Spooky Fish. So that's her only appearance. Sparky. Sparky is Stan's dog, who is a homosexual. He has had many gay relationships to Stan's chagrin, including one with Clyde's dog Rex in Big Gay Elf's Big Gay Boat Ride. Sparky made his second appearance in proper condom use during which Stan played Red Rocket by masturbating Sparky. His third appearance was in Good Times with Weapons, wherein his fur is used to make Butters look like a dog. So does that mean between those seasons Sparky died? It's never made very clear in the fact that we don't actually see Sparky in the episode. Hmm. Evil goldfish from a parallel universe. The goldfish Stan's arm Flo gave the goldfish arm Flo gave Stan and who killed many people including her and Kenny and framed his owner Stan for it. Sharon nearly went insane covering up these murders in an effort to protect her precious little handsome a precious, handsome little boy. Roy. Roy was Stan's stepdad after Sharon di- divorces Randy in clubhouses. She immediately marries Roy, though it is actually more likely as presented from the timeline that his parents were starting out on a trial separation. Roy is shown to be extremely emotional and possibly bipolar, particularly whenever Stan attempts to speak, where one moment he tried to be friendly with Stan, he immediately begins screaming that Stan is ungrateful and does not 
let up on him. He seems obsessed with cutting firewood, forcing Stan to do it for an entire day. Sharon and Roy stay together until Sharon reconciles with Randy in Stan's clubhouse. And the two of them proceed to have sex. Roy, meanwhile, is held captive in a bear trap set by Stan. What happened to him afterward is unknown, but it can be assumed that he died while being hung from the bear trap. Okay, relationships. Kyle. Stan is one of the leaders of the main student population in South Park Elementary and therefore well acquainted with most of the students. He is one of the few characters that always gets along with the girls and was voted third cutest boy by them in the list. He is respected and liked by pretty much everyone. He also has gone out of his way to make peace with his fellow students. Like when he tries to make things right with Token Black after Randy says the N-word. Or on, on Wheel of Fortune, thinking he would win money, in with apologies to Jesse Jackson. Kyle Broflovsky. Stan and Kyle have been great friends since they were since the very beginning of the show. Stan seems to be the only character in the show who gets along with all of the main and background characters. They have been known to end up working together in certain adventures, such as in Fantastic Easter Special, and are often dragged into the same circumstances due to this, such as in Imagination Land Episode 2. Stan has saved Kyle's life on several occasions without hesitation, most notably in Super Best Friends, and has once stated that he does not want Kyle to die until he does. He nearly always defends Kyle when Cartman's hatred of him goes over the top, such as in Cartman Land and Cherokee Hair Tampons. Stan often becomes anxious about Kyle when he is tricked by various scams or becomes immersed in his hatred of Cartman, bending over backwards to encourage or reassure Kyle, convince him otherwise, or to get him out of trouble. They are frequently seen together or talking to each other, even in the absence of Cartman or Kenny, making them rather like twins. Although, in the opening credits of the show, they sing the same lines together, however their friendship has hit bumps in a number of episodes. Such as Prehistoric Iceman, Super Best Friends, Kenny Dies, South Park is Gay, Dude and Turd, Follow That Egg, Guitar Quero, You're Getting Old, Asperger's and Truth in, Truth and Advertising. They have reconciled on screen in all of these episodes. With the exceptions of South Park is Gay, Douche and Turd, and You're Getting Old. Although all those times they were shown to be friends in the next episode. The episode Guitar Quero focuses more than any other on their friendship, as a big argument between the two forms, the major conflict of the story. However, in the end, they reconcile, with no lasting damage done to the friendship. Stan also had a great deal of concern when Kyle was voted the ugliest boy in the class, in the list. Their friendship is so strong that Cartman called them fags, and has even commented, You want to get a room so you can make out for a while? In Super Best Friends. It is also notable that in Imagination Land Episode 3, Kyle was the only person who could hear Stan's voice in his head when Stan was trapped in Imagination Land. Though it was most likely due the shock he got from the portal. Shouldn't that be due to the shock? 
whoever typed this thing out, learn some grammar. Okay. Eric Cartman. Even though Stan does not really consider Cartman a friend, the two are often seen together. In two days before the day after tomorrow, Stan and Cartman hang out at a boating rack. And Cartman even comments that his that it is great that they are hanging out with each other without Kyle, implying that Carmen at least would prefer to have a closer friendship with Stan. Stan, meanwhile, seems to be more accepting or at least tolerant of Cartman than Kyle, and even Kenny at times, such as in Fat Button Pancake Head, While Carl is immediately distrustful of Cartman's truthfulness in his claim that he cannot control the actions of his hand, which has seemed to take on a life of its own, Stan gives Cartman the benefit of the doubt and admits that, with all the stuff that happens in South Park, Cartman could be telling the truth. In Woodland Critter Christmas, Cartman made Stan the protagonist of his Christmas story. He is described as the boy in the red puffball hat, showing that Cartman sees Stan as a heroic figure of sorts. In Douche and Turd, Stan votes for Cartman's mascot instead of Kyle's, much to Kyle's dismay. Although, in Are You There God, It's Me, Jesus, when Stan appears to be the only boy who has not gotten their period, Cartman reassures him that he will get it one day. Mm-mm. No, he won't. Ever. In Fun with Bill, when Stan was hospitalised with vaginitis, Cartman seemed concerned and was relieved that Stan was saved just in time. This is a rare occasion when Cartman has put his friends in front of him in front of his own personal gain. And as he held Stan stop people from eating veal, even though he did not get anything in return for it, and would be starving himself for days. He also tells the FBI negotiator that there is a sick kid up here, with uh, referring to Stan, when negotiating to release the calves, showing that he is worried about Stan's health. It is implied that in Prehistoric Iceman that Stan considers Cartman his second best friend. When Stan and Kyle fall out in the episode, Stan claimed that his new best friend was Cartman, as did Kyle. But they both claim that Cartman sucks as a best friend when they made up. This could be because Stan really values his best friendship with Kyle. Either way, it is clear that Stan does consider Cartman as a close friend. Also, in Bebe's Boobs Destroy Society, Cartman wants to kick Kyle and Tweak out of the group, but does not want to kick out Stan, which implies that Cartman likes having Stan as a friend. However, in Osama Bin Laden has farty pants, Cartman declares that he hates Stan because Stan loves animals. Even so, in Trapped in the Closet, all three boys defriend Stan after he becomes the leader of Scientology. As the boys leave, Car- as the boys leave Cartman turns to Stan and says, I still hate Kyle more than you. The two can also be said to be friends because they admitted to being friends in front of the homeschool kids. In some episodes, Stan is shown having a strong hatred for Cartman, even if Cartman is not doing anything. In Trapper Keeper, when the cyborg says he has to kill Cartman, Stan asks if he can do it, and prepares to shoot Cartman before the cyborg decides against the idea. Although Stan is much more tolerant of Cartman than Kyle is, 
He often holds Carmen in very high contempt for his unacceptable behaviour. In sexual healing, Stan and Carmen were seen playing Tiger Woods PGA Tour 11 together, hinting that despite Carmen's behaviours, Stan still considers him a friend. However, in Bass to Mouth, when Mr. Mackey claimed that Cartman killed himself for being fat, when the school faculty threw him under the school bus, or threw him under the bus, Stan was more concerned with keeping Eavesdropper from posting its biggest story than with any injuries Cartman may have suffered. Kenny McCormick Although Kenny and Stan do not seem to share the same bond that Stan and Kyle do, Stan sees Kenny as a close friend. In Kenny Dies, out of the three boys, Stan has the hardest time dealing with Kenny dying and cannot even bear to see him in the hospital. When Stan finally realises that Kenny passed on, for good, because it wasn't good, he feels like he's Kenny's worst friend, until they hear about Cartman's selfishness. The two boys often hang out with one another, when Cartman and Kyle get into their arguments, and Stan and Kenny do not want to listen to it, as su- such as in The Passion of the Jew, in Best Friends Forever, Stan and Kyle fight against Cartman to not have Kenny's feeding tube removed to save Kenny's life. However, in Cherokee Hair Tampons, when all hope seems Lost to save Kyle, and Stan breaks down crying in front of Kenny because of Kyle's impending death. He does not seem to care or even acknowledge the fact that Kenny dies all the time. This angers Kenny and makes him leave Stan to go home, which in turn causes his death by walking under a fallen piano. And even then, Stan still fails to notice or care. During the first five seasons, Stan would almost always be the first to react in horror, saying, Oh my God, they killed Kenny! After one of Kenny's classic deaths. Of course, immediately after Kyle would say, You bastards! And he would not acknowledge Kenny again after that. The only times that Stan would treat Kenny's death with immediate unconcern was when he was preoccupied with something unimportant, with something important, such as in Cartman's Silly Hate Crime 2000 and Gnome. In Chef Goes Nanas, both Stan, Kyle, and even Gerald Broklowski show a complete lack of horror and concern for Kenny's death after he eats dozens of antiacid tablets. and drinks water, at which point he explodes. Instead, all of them laugh and clap, finding that particular death a good one. In Coon vs. Coon and Friends, Kenny as Mysterion tries to convince Stan and Kyle about the truth of his death, and that they never remember, even to the point of shooting himself to prove it. Much to Mysterion's dismay, this does not work, as no one who sees it remembers. Wendy Testerberger A recurring topic in the early seasons was Stan's relationship with Wendy Testerberger. Her first appearance in Cartman Gets an Anal Probe shows Stan going on a date with her. A running gag in the early seasons of their relationship showed Stan vomiting out of nervousness whenever she tried to say anything to him, or kiss him. Stan is the first of the four main boys seen getting his first kiss during a flashback in City on the Edge of Forever. Flashback. But not the first to actually do so. Wendy dumps Stan for token and raisins, which drives Stan into a state of depression and even causes him to briefly join a local goth clique. After this, the two spend two seasons barely on speaking terms and rarely saw each other eye to eye, 
However, the two still have feelings for each other lingering in the air, as seen in Follow That Egg, in which Sam worries about getting paired with Wendy on a school project, and is jealous when she ends up paired with Kyle. However, at the end of the list, the season 11 finale, the two both work together to expose the secret corruption of Wendy's school list-making society and ultimately reconcile at the end. In a near copy of the end scene of Karma Gets an Anal Probe, Wendy is about to kiss him when he vomits in her face. This was the last time he threw up on her, even when she kissed him a few times later in the series. Their reconciliation was confirmed in the season 12 episode Super Fun Time, in which they pair up for a school field trip by holding hands, refusing to let go for a long time, and Stan confirms Wendy is once again his girlfriend. Breast ca- in Breast Cancer Show Ever, he is concerned about Wendy fighting Cartman, but feels that he could not do anything about it. However, he cheers her on when she beats him up. Elementary School Musical concerns Stan's efforts not to beat, not to lose Wendy to a popular boy at school named Bryden Guermo, or Guermo, as it says here, the spelling by singing songs based on the style of from High School Musical, despite Wendy's reassurance that she will not leave him and that the whole school likes Bryden. Wendy also kisses Stan on the cheek when she closes her locker and leaves and Stan does not throw up. It is shown, however, in You Have Zero Friends, that after the second time they resume their relationship, Stan does not plan on letting him she does not plan on letting him go for any other girl. She even goes so far as to judge him by his Facebook account rather than him in real life. Would she see his state? Should she see his status stay single, and or see any other girl's comments on his Facebook page? In Asperger's, she becomes increasingly concerned about Stan's cynicism, and tries to talk Kyle into talking with Stan about it, but he refuses. Both Stan and Wendy are shown at the end of the episode sitting on a picnic blanket, presumably reconciling their relationship once again. In Go Fund Yourself, she bre- Stan breaks up with Wendy due to him starting a startup company with Kyle, Cartman and Kenny, and Cartman, Kenny and Butters. However, they get back together at the end of the next episode. In Skank Hunt, Wendy breaks up with Stan due to the actions of internet troll Skank Hunt 42. All of the girls stated that his actions spoke for the boys' opinions. In Oh Jeez, Stan is seen in a restaurant with Wendy promising her he will change. Bill Cosby points out that if he is only changing to get her back, then he is being selfish. Stan tells Wendy not to give up on boys because I miss you, Wendy. Before Wendy can respond, Butters berates Stan, calling him a traitor and ruins the moment. Trivia. Stan is the only one of the four who has never contracted a terminal illness, as both Kyle and Cartman contracted AIDS in tonsil trouble, and Kenny contracted muscular dystrophy uh, dystrophy in Kenny Dies. Stan has been shown 
to be an animal rights activist. He protected baby calves from slaughter in Fun With Veal, joined Peter, though only to survive because he did not do so. Because if he did not do so, he would have starved in the wilderness, in Douche and Turd, and headed the Whale Wars crew for a while in Whale, in whale Wars. In the episode Make Love Not Warcraft, the Warcraft executive tells Randy they need to get to the sword, that they need to get the sword to a, a great knight by the name of Love, Love the Spuge. However, at the start of the episode, when viewing Stan's game screen, you can read Stan's character name as Stan is cool. Before season four, Stan was never seen without his hat. Even when he was in bed. Stan is the last of the four boys to have a supernatural power at one point. Kyle has disappeared and briefly became omniscient. An omniscient being by studying existentialism in the Two Fairies Taps 2000. Carmen has the ability to see and hear ghosts and the ability to fire electricity at people in South Park Digger Longer and Uncut. Kenny has had the power of immortality throughout the series. Stan attains momentous powers like flying, apparent telekinesis slash super force, and projecting fire from hands and mouth. When Stan possesses him, when Satan possesses him in order to fight Beezle Boot, no, Be- in Freemiumism 3, Stan has, has said, Dude, this is pretty fucked up right here on at least three Christmas specials. Mr. Hanky the Christmas Poo, Mr. Hanky, uh, Merry Christmas Charlie Manson and Red Slay Down. He says these when something strange happens. In Mr. Hanky the Christmas Poo, he says that when Mr. Hanky appears. In Merry Christmas Charlie Manson, he says it when him and the others go to celebrate Christmas with Charlie Manson. And in Red Slay Down, he says it when Jesus is shot by the by an Iraqi. Pardon me. Stan has a somewhat stronger digestive system than many others do, as shown in Dead Celebrities, since he is able to eat Chipotle without bleeding out his ass afterwards. Cartman even remarks that Stan has a golden rectum of the gods. Stan has asthma and sexual harassment, Panda. Cartman takes his inhaler. Stan's anime counterpart from the episode Good Times with Weapons bears a large resemblance to Capcom's character Ryu in Street Fighter. So far, Stan is the only one of the boys who has not shown any gender swapping tendencies. Cartman was shown dressed up as Britney Spears in Awesome-O. Kyle had a female avatar in Make Love Not Warcraft. And Kenny dressed like a princess in three of the last four episodes of season 17 and South Park The Stick of Truth. As of 201, Stan is the only one of the four boys who does not have a red-headed parent. Stan is depicted as a jock by the goth kids in Breast Cancer Show Ever. Stan is the only one of the four boys not to have the Oh My God They Kill quote about him. Really? Yeah, I know Kenny said Oh My God They Killed Cartman at least once. But I've never heard anyone in the show say, oh my god, they killed Kyle. 
and oh my god, they killed Kenny was said nearly all the time in the earlier episodes. And then there was oh my god, they killed Chef in The Return of Chef. But about the four main boys, okay, Stan's absences, here's Elizabeth, season three, Cat Orgy and Jubilee, season four, Pip, none of the main boys appeared in that episode, it was about Pip, a retelling of Great Expectations in South Park style, season 10, A Million Little Fibers and Go 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 12, season 18, Handicar, and season 20, Not Funny. And the rest is just his video game appearances, guys. And until the next episode, for which you'll see a poll soon, thanks for watching.